Hi, Robert Chukro here. First, I'm going to tell you the difference between contrived and natural movement, why it's important, and then I'll show you examples so you'll see the difference. When we learn Taiji, at first, we have to be given landmarks and put our hands and body and arms and legs in certain places at certain times. It's very hard to do and nobody found it, has found it harder than I when I was a student, very out of my body. When you do natural movement, you're not using your analytical mind. You don't have a preconception about how things move, even though in your subconscious mind, you know you've done the, the movement enough times that you know how it will go. But you're not choreographing it. You're not setting exactly how each movement should go based on a preconceived idea. In a self-defense situation, if you move that way, you will lose. Contrived movement is not in the moment. You're in the future. Somewhere, in your, maybe in your subconscious mind, you're thinking about what comes next so you can do it. It's not non-attachment. Non-attachment means that you don't have a preconceived idea. If you have a preconceived idea, you're attached to that and it's going to be the same every time and it won't be natural which means it'll be based on the conditions which are constantly changing. And the other thing is it will not be non-action because you'll be using a lot of shoving different body parts around which takes much more strength than letting them move naturally based on laws of gravity, momentum, elasticity of the tissues, um, weight, all these factors that are involved, timing. So let me just now show you what I'm talking about. By choreographed, I'm referring to the paint by numbers way of teaching that we were all exposed to and rightly so because otherwise how would we have anything to take home to practice so it had to be done that way <clears throat> and so that this is the way the paint by numbers teaching goes start out after the hands come down in the, the beginning move feet parallel shoulder width apart and sit into the left leg Turn to the right, holding a ball, shift, step straight ahead with the left foot, heel first, shift, right hand goes down, left hand comes up, and turn, bringing the right foot to 45 degrees, to the starting direction. And that is totally appropriate for teaching beginners, otherwise they'd never get it. On the, I know I wouldn't have. On the other hand, you want to wean yourself from that kind of movement once you've learned the moves and practiced them for a while. So it, it becomes more like the following. When I shift to the left, then ward off right, when I shift to the left, I notice that my hand is moving to the left. That's giving it some leftward moment, momentum. Then I turn. As I turn, my shoulder moves in this direction, arcs in that direction. That brings, tilts my arm a little bit more. I'm choreographing this now. And now I shift. I'm giving, not only is my arm have, does my arm have potential energy, energy of height, but it also has kinetic energy because I'm moving it. Now when I stop, it swings and then comes up. So the movement would be like this. As I go down, everything is bringing my hand up. 
I'm relaxing my shoulders, the whole shoulder girdle, my chest, my abdomen, lower abdomen, feeling my arms, making them very heavy, making sure the shoulder joint is totally released. And this is more the way it goes. faster, more swing. So that's natural movement and what you need to do and what I've been doing for the past number of years, decades, is finding all the spots where I'm ahead, where I'm, I'm, I'm not in the moment but I'm in the future. I'm reaching for that ball because I know that it's coming. And I'm afraid if I, if I don't do anything with this arm, it'll never happen, but it will. See? And I feel myself, do, oh, no, do it again, until it gets to be smooth and natural and continuous and exhilarating. Thank you. <laughs>